Speaking of the Messiah's disciples, the Quran reports, Quran 3, verse 54, And they, the disciples from the previous verse, schemed, and Allah schemed and plotted against them, and Allah is the best of schemers. And while the last part's true, a good schemer does not a good God make. I appreciate the confession, though. It makes the job of exposing Islam easier. Another translation reads, Quran 3.54, Lord, we believe in your revelations. He's speaking here of the New and Old Covenant, specifically what he calls the Torah and Gospels. And follow this apostle. I believe he's referring here to Yeshua, although he doesn't know his name. Enroll us among the witnesses, but the Christians contrived a plot, and Allah did the same, but Allah's plot was the best. And that's the premise of this book and its conclusion. Islam is a plot. The third translation says that they refers to disbelievers, not the disciples, and that they plotted to kill Yeshua. And they, the disbelievers, plotted to kill Isa or Jesus, and Allah plotted too. In this case, Allah's plot is the denial of the Messiah's crucifixion. In the next verse, Satan divulged the nature of his scheme. Quran 3.55 Allah said, Jesus, I will take you and raise you to myself and rid you of the infidels who have forged the lie that you are my son. Those who are infidels will surely receive severe torment both in this world and the next, and none will they have as a savior for them. As you recall, Allah defines infidels in Surah 572 as, They are surely infidels who say, God is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of Mary. Mecca, I think we have a problem. Christ is the Greek word for the Hebrew Messiah. So those who agree with Allah and say that Yeshua is the Messiah, the Christ, are infidels, and they're going to receive a severe punishment in this world and the next. Those who trust Yeshua to be their Savior, the good news for which the new covenant was written, will find no Savior according to Allah. This is some plot. Said another way, if you say that Yeshua is the Christ, the Messiah, you are acknowledging His divinity. But if you say that God, divinity, is the Christ, you are an unbelieving infidel. It's little wonder Muhammad claimed that anyone who questioned the Quran would reject Islam. JC equals M equals G, yet G does not equal JC, even though according to Allah, JC equals M. Muslims must practice a new form of logic. After defining Jesus as the virgin-born, miracle-working, divinely inspired and resurrected Messiah, The Quran claims Yeshua was just kidding about that dying on the cross as our Savior stuff and calling himself God. Yet it professes to confirm the Torah and Gospels, books that predict and proclaim the truth it denies. Methinks this invites a comparison, and even Allah seems to agree. Quran 4.82 Do they not ponder over the Quran? Had it been the word of any other but Allah they would surely have found a good deal of variation in it. Continuing, he says, Those who check and scrutinize will know it. This sounds like an invitation, even a dare, to do exactly as we're doing. And what we have found by scrutinizing it is a good deal of variation. If Muhammad had ignored the Bible, Adam, Satan, Noah, Abraham, Lot, Moses, and especially the Messiah... I would have judged Islam independently, based solely upon its own merits. But he wasn't that smart, and his dark spirit was a liability, having his own agenda. In case you're wondering, the scheme or plot that the disciples concocted according to Allah was the gospel account of Christ, the one in which Yeshua claimed to be God in the flesh, the one in which the Messiah taught us what he's like 
so that we might know Yahweh and form an eternal relationship with our Creator, the one in which He allowed the Romans to crucify Him for proclaiming that He was divine, the one in which He rose from the dead, so that His sacrifice would enable us to live forever in His presence. It is the plot of the greatest story ever told. Muhammad's dark spirit acknowledged the single most important event in human history, the resurrection of Yeshua. But then, knowing that his religion of submission didn't mesh with Yeshua's gospel of freedom, Satan called God's plan of salvation blasphemy. He said the disciples' account recorded in the new covenant was false, a reason for dispute, even though he claimed to have inspired them. Quran 3.55 Behold, Allah said, O Jesus, I will take you and raise you to myself and clear you of the falsehoods of those who blaspheme. I will make those who follow you superior to those who reject faith to the day of resurrection. Then you shall all return to me, and I will judge between you on the matters wherein you dispute. If Yeshua was raised unto God, if he cheated death by way of a divine order, he was the Messiah, and thus he was the creator of the universe. Therefore, Muhammad must be condemned, the Quran burned, and Islam repudiated. Nothing bothers Yahweh more than false prophets, false doctrines, and false gods. So let's review another translation to make certain we have this right. Remember, when Allah said, Jesus, lo, I am gathering you and causing you to ascend unto me. I am cleansing you of those who disbelieve. A third reads, When Allah said, Jesus, I am going to terminate the period of your stay on earth and cause you to ascend unto me and purify you of those who disbelieve, I will decide between you concerning that which you differed. Speaking of differences, in Arabic, the Quran says that the Messiah's name was Esau, Arabic for Esau. Esau could not have been the Messiah, as Esau was a worshiper of Baal, the Babylonian sun god. While the New Covenant scriptures erroneously substitute Jesus for Yeshua's name, this error is a result of the translators, not of God. The Quran claims to be the perfect word of God. And yet it ascribes not only a errant name to Yeshua, meaning Yahweh saves, it picked the very name that Yahweh used as an example of someone who was worshipping the devil. Returning to this verse, while meaningless in the context of the greater whole, if the Messiah's life was cut short, he couldn't have talked while he was old, as an earlier verse alleged. But the overall message is clear. According to the Quran, the Messiah was an ordinary man and a Muslim to boot. His message of salvation wasn't true, even though Allah claims to have revealed it. He didn't die on a cross, and yet he was resurrected. And most importantly, those who believe that he is God have no Savior and will roast in hell. Speaking of Christians, Allah proclaims, Quran 3.56 as for those disbelieving infidels, I will punish them with a terrible agony in this world and the next. They have no one to help them or save them. It's Satan's ultimate fantasy. Continuing on, we are told that this lunacy is a rehearsal directly from God. Quran 3, verse 58. This is what we rehearse to you of the signs and message, a wise reminder, the similitude or likeness of Esau whom the Quran translators would like you to believe is Jesus. Before Allah is that of Adam. He created him from dust, then said to him, Be, and he was. Allah is digging himself in deeper. Now he claims that his Esau, or Jesus, was created miraculously like Adam from the dust. While that's not exactly true, if it were true, it would render Muhammad meaningless. Despite all the evidence to the contrary, Quran 3, verse 60, the truth comes from Allah alone. That would mean that all scientific discoveries are erroneous. Math is without merit, and courts are folly. 
So be not of those who doubt, waver, or dispute. If any one disputes in this matter with you, now, after knowledge has come to you, say, Come, let us gather together our sons and women among ourselves. Then let us earnestly pray and invoke the curse of Allah on those who lie. So if someone tells a Muslim that Allah's book proves that he is a phony, they're told to gather their sons and women and leave. They are not to look into the merits of the allegation. They aren't to even try and refute the charge. There is to be no discussion, no investigation, no evangelism, and especially no thinking. None of that is in Satan's interest. Satan wants Muslims to pray for a hymn to invoke a curse on those who expose him. Mm-hmm. 